Hello viewers, welcome to the session on residential space design and furnishings. In the previous session, we studied the topic furniture and furnishings for convenience and safety. In this session too, we are going to study some more facts about this furniture and furnishings for convenience and safety. To begin with, we are going to understand the meaning and concept of furniture and furnishings in home. We will identify, choose and arrange different types of furniture, furnishings and accessories. We are going to study window treatments. Window treatments serve many purposes in an interior environment. They can provide privacy, light and sun control, reduced energy consumption by preventing heat loss again and decreased sound transmission. The type of treatment as well as the type of material used will determine the effectiveness of the treatment in any given instance. Sheer, semi-sheer or casement fabrics will provide minimum privacy, shade and energy savings. Heavy opaque fabrics and hard treatments provide greater effect. Full soft treatments will absorb more sound than hard treatments. Window treatments should complement and support the interior design of a space. In addition, window treatments also add flexibility in the design, conceal architectural defects or change the apparent size, shape and character of a room. Choices should be made based upon the elements and principles of good design. Other factors to take into consideration include the structural characteristics of a space, exterior appearance, architectural style and historical context. Window treatments can be classified into three basic categories that are soft, hard and top. The first one soft. Soft window treatments include those which are generally made of soft fabrics, curtains, draperies and shades. Both curtains and draperies are fabric panels which are generally pleated and hung on a rod over a window. Draperies tend to be more formal than curtains, usually consisting of several layers of panels. Shades typically consist of fabric panels designed to be raised and lowered. The wide range of styles along with limitless fabric options makes soft window treatments extremely flexible. Now let us look at hard window treatments. Hard window treatments are constructed from rigid materials and include shutters and blinds. The first one is shutters. Shutters typically are constructed from wood. They consist of either a solid panel of wood or wood lowers within a style and rail frame. They come in a variety of sizes, designs and finishes. Blinds are available as horizontal or vertical slats of wood, aluminum or plastic and may have fabric or paper inserts. Blinds are effective for view, light and air control. If desired, they can be completely hidden behind other window treatments. What are horizontal blinds? Horizontal blinds have slats that run the width of the window. Vertical blinds have slats that run the height. By using a control wand or pull card, blinds may be raised and lowered or moved side to side and the slats angled up, down or side to side. Top treatments refer to any window treatment applied to the top of either soft or hard window treatments. In addition to adding to the aesthetic of a window treatment and giving a window a more finished appearance, top treatments also may screen the hardware and rod, improve window proportion and height structural defects, increase apparent height or width of a window or make different sized windows appear equal by altering their visual proportions. Top treatments may be chosen from a wide variety of soft treatments and hard treatments. Soft top treatments are called valances. 
The term valence encompasses any shape and style of valence within the designer's imagination and limitless fabric and rod options. Hard top treatments are called cornices. Cornices are often used for energy efficiency. Let us look at how to select and maintain window treatments. Aesthetic and functional performance criteria are to be used when selecting window treatments for an interior space. As with textile fabric selection, window treatments should be evaluated on both appearance and serviceability factors. Fiber properties for window coverings critically influence performance and durability. Density, elasticity, stiffness, sunlight and chemical resistance, color fastness, flame resistance, weight, energy conservation, light transmission and reflectance all determine how a window covering will function in its environment. To preserve the appearance and usefulness of the treatments, sagging and shrinkage should be minimized. Sagging could destroy the balance of laterally draping folds and cause the fabric to puddle on the floor. Shrinkage will do the opposite and cause the treatment to look improperly fit. Mildew resistance needs to be considered when selecting window treatments. In many climates, windows are a point of moisture condensation and operable windows will expose the window treatment to weather. The next one is how to maintain. What is the best maintenance of windows? Preventive maintenance is important in reducing deterioration of the fibers and preserving the original appearance of window coverings. Moisture poses the greatest concern to maintaining window treatments. Care should be taken to keep treatments from hanging in contact with moisture. Water may combine with soil present on fibers causing the fabric to stain. Water may also combine with pollutants and oily cooking fumes to form dilute acids that attack and weaken fibers. In spaces where this occurs, window treatment should be cleaned frequently to prevent accumulation of these pollutants. Cleaning itself is an important maintenance concern for window treatments. Typically, textile window coverings should be cleaned by a professional cleaning service. Hard window treatments should be vacuumed or dusted on a regular basis to avoid accumulation of dirt. These types of treatments tend to be more difficult to clean off built up residue than soft treatments. What are the accessories for interior enrichment? Importance, functional and decorative accessories. Accessories are the most personal part of interior design. They give rooms personality and express you and your taste. The two types of accessories are functional and decorative items. Tell something about the interests and activities of the people who live in the home. The first one is functional accessories. What are they? Functional accessories serve a specific purpose or need. Examples include clocks, mirrors, pillows, vases, table lighters, lamps, books, spices in a kitchen or bowls of fruit. The second type of accessories are decorative accessories. What are they? Decorative accessories are those that you can choose for their beauty alone. Plants and flowers, paintings, photographs, sculpture, handcrafted items and collections play an important part in enriching our home and our spirits. A home without any decorative objects would be almost like a world without sound. Interesting and inexpensive ideas can be found everywhere and used throughout your home. Look for personalized ways of accessorizing your home. Regional characteristics of the area where you live might be reflected in your choice of accessories. Or you may have interesting or cherished items that have been handed down through your family. Hobbies or special interests of family members may solve the problem of what to do with empty wall space, 
table surfaces are shelves. Here are some suggestions for interesting home accents through the use of accessories. The first one is folk art. Folk art is the term for simple traditional objects made by artists in many countries. It is meaningful, beautiful and often useful. Folk art includes pottery, weaving, woodcraft, metalwork, glass blowing, basketry and many other crafts. Heritage items. Heritage items, whether true antiques or collectibles, can be family treasures or purchased from antique shops and flea markets. Family photographs. Family photographs can be valued and treasured accents in any home. Snapshots can be composed in colleges and placed in one frame. Formal portraits are perfect in any room of the house. Casual snapshots are best used in informal rooms. Assorted framed pictures can be grouped in a wall arrangement or placed on easels and used on tables or in bookcases. The next one is travel mementos. Travel mementos are those mementos that can be from various places you have visited that provide conversation starters and pleasant memories such as state plates, artwork, travel posters or crafts representatives of areas you have traveled through. Natural materials. Natural materials are flowers, fruits, vegetables and other fond items that can provide important accents in the home. Interesting seashells, rocks, minerals, stones, weeds, pods or flowers for dried arrangements are even a bare branch to place in a glass container. Flowers, whether brought in from the wild, cut from the garden or purchased at the florist can be effective when loosely placed in a vase or arranged to accentuate a particular theme. Even an assortment of greenery with a variety of textures and colors will create a very pleasant accent. These materials help to create a living environment. The next one is plants. Plants give immediate vitality to a room. They are a wonderful ecological decorating accessory that feeds on carbon dioxide and emits oxygen. Consider where they will be placed in the room so you can select plants that have the appropriate humidity and light to grow and flourish. Plants can sit on windowsills, tables, shelves or pedestals or hang from the ceiling. The next one, books or magazines. Books or magazines arranged spontaneously on a shelf or table surface add warmth to a room. Combine books with an occasional figurine, a small painting, a trophy or other small article you price. Tuck in a small plant and let it creep over the edge of a shelf and add interest and an element of surprise. The next one is sculpture. Sculpture can be purchased from young artists, art schools or communities or shows. Sometimes interesting objects such as carved newel posts or parts of demolished buildings can be used as sculptural pieces. Small items can be displayed on rectangular or square plywood bases, painted flat black or white. A small spotlight creates a dramatic setting. The next one is baskets. Baskets are basic to all cultures. They are meant to be used but are often works of art. They can be hung on a wall, hung from the kitchen ceiling along with pots and pans, displayed in groupings on tables, or lined and used for flower arrangements. Their popularity has surged because they are readily available, they are lightweight and they can be purchased at reasonable prices and can be used in a variety of ways. The next one is hobbies. Hobbies and activities can be the source for interesting decorative accessories. 
Do you play a musical instrument, do needlework, collect stamps, build model aeroplanes or cars or like plants? If so, use them to enrich your room. Collections. Collections can result from a planned activity or can just happen. They can be as fanciful as mounted butterflies, as serious as beautifully bound books or coin collections, as personal as family photographs or needlepoint pieces or as specialized as brass candlesticks. Most of us collect something. If things are worth collecting, they are worth displaying where they can be seen and enjoyed. The next one is boxes. Boxes of every imaginable type ranging in size from cricket boxes to huge trunks can be acquired. Combine boxes that relate and look good together. Use large trunks as cocktail tables or open them to display plants. Linens are your favorite hobby. Stack boxes and storage baskets of similar or graduated sizes into decorative wall units. The next one in our study, in our discussion is pillows. Pillows can change the look and feeling of a room. By using various fabrics, trims, colors, designs, textures, shapes and sizes, pillows can help balance the room by repeating the colors or patterns found on the other side of the room. Pillows are one of the least expensive ways to give a room a refreshed look and a perfect for do-it-yourself projects. The next one in the study is lamps. Lamps should create light where it is needed. Each room needs general and specific lighting. General lighting illuminates the whole room. In most cases, every seating area in a conversation grouping needs a light source of some kind. Lighting for specific activities such as reading, working, studying is also necessary. If the lighting is not built in, it must be provided by lamps. Consider the height of each lamp shade within a room. The bottoms of the shades should be close to the same distance from the floor. If you use a tall lamp on a low table, you might use a shorter lamp on a higher table. Most conventional lamps range from 24 to 30 inches in height. They should be placed on low enough tables so the shades cover the bulbs at the eye level of a person seated in the room. White and off-white shades cast the most light, but dark or metal shades reflect their light in interesting pools. Today, lamps are made to fit any mood or special needs, and they come in several sizes and shapes. Types of lamps include flow lamps, wall lamps, theme lamps, and high-intensity lamps with a direct beam. Now, let us look at some of the guidelines for selecting accessories. Is the accessory suited to its function? Does it work? A placemat that does not lie flat on a table is not appropriate for its intended use. A lamp that is too tall for a table and produces glare is not suitable for its purpose. Is the accessory aesthetically pleasing? Is the design of the object simple and well proportioned? Is it pleasing in texture and color? Is it suited to the material from which it is made? Is it honest or is it made to look like some other material? Is the surface decorating appropriate? Does it enhance its shape, beauty and function? Is the size, shape and color in harmony with the place where it will be used? The background, nearby furniture and light. Is it needed in the first place? Let us now look at flower decor in interior. What is the best way we can decorate flowers for interior decoration? What is the best selection and care that we can give 
in using flowers for interior decoration. Flower decor is the combination of uh, several elements to produce a visually pleasing display of fresh silk or dried flowers. Flowers are arranged in several basic designs including vertical, horizontal, triangular, crescent and oval arrangements. Other options include a uh, minimal arrangement such as the lazy S or Hogarth's curve and freestanding arrangements. Hogarth's curve is uh, named for English painter William Hogarth who introduced designs shaped like the curves of the letter S into floral design. The elements of flower arrangement include line materials which are the first pieces placed in a design to establish the overall width and height. The dominant materials also called form flowers such as lilies, irises or peonies are placed next followed by smaller mass flowers or secondary materials in between the dominant selections. Filler flowers are optional. Special materials such as moss or vines add texture to an arrangement. The accent of a flower arrangement might be a focal point including a statue or figurine or might be the impact of a single color. Open flowers also add accent to a flower arrangement. General flower arrangement design principles include unity, balance, harmony and rhythm. Other elements include the use of light, space, texture, scale and accent. When using shallow or low containers, a general guideline to make the tallest stem approximately 1 to 2 times the length or diameter of the bowl or vase. Caring for flower arrangements. Most floral arrangements last between 4 to 7 days depending on the types of flowers used and the type of care they receive. The following tips are useful for longer lasting more vibrant flowers. For floral arrangements these are the best tips and techniques that can be followed. Keep the vase filled or floral foam soaked with water containing a flower food provided by a florist. If the flower food solution becomes cloudy, replace it entirely. If possible, recut the stems by removing 1 to 2 inches with a sharp knife. Keep flowers in a cool spot, maybe 65 to 72 degrees fan heat away from direct sunlight, heating or cooling vents directly under ceiling fans or on top of televisions or radiators. Appliances like televisions gives off heat causing flowers to dehydrate. For loose bunches or boxed flowers. If you can't get your flowers in a flower food solution right away, keep them in a cool place. Fill a clean deep vase with water and add the flower food obtained from your florist. Be sure to follow the directions on the package. Remove leaves that will be below the water line. Leaves in water will promote bacterial growth. Recut stems with a sharp knife. Do this under water. This allows the stems to draw in water instead of air and place the flowers in the vase solution you have prepared. If you purchase loose flowers for your own arrangements, you should also consider some of the tips. When selecting flowers, look for flowers with upright firm petals and buds beginning to open. Yellow spotted or drooping leaves are signs of age. When using woody stems and branches such as quince, forsythia or lilac, cut the stem with sharp pruning shears. Place in warm water containing fresh flower food to promote flower opening. Fine, so far we have seen house as a place which gives ultimate peace and comfort for any human being. Proper
Space planning is crucial aspect for any housing design process. The house, whether it is designed, to be built or chosen after having been built should be arranged so as to facilitate these essential activities, foster harmonious family life and minister to the privacy of the individuals living in it. It should fit the scale of living of the occupants. Housing that is well designed in terms of space planning and room arrangement does enhance the quality of life of its occupants. Hence, Proper and careful planning of residential spaces must be there as it benefits the inhabitants of the space. House consists of different elements like floors, walls, ceilings, furniture, furnishings, accessories, etc. All these elements must be in harmony to give an overall impression to the house. Each of these elements play their part in beautifying a home. Hence, one should be careful in selecting placement and use of these elements in order to make a residential space more habitable and beautifying. Hope the session on windows treatment and the care that we give to flowers are arranging flowers for interior decoration, the tips and techniques was useful and helpful to all of you. Thank you very much.